So, uh, just a quick video to catch uh, Dosemba, uh, which is the uh, hashtag running around on YouTube videos about DOS machines, especially older ones. Um, so, a little bit of a Gilsoft history here, uh, and a pickup I had recently. Um, my, one of the great regrets, of course, is that we got rid of a lot of the machines uh, when we closed the business down. So, large swathes of the system. I managed to recover uh, a lot of IBM 360K discs. But for some reason, I struggled to read the 160k discs from the very first machine that we bought in Gilsoft that was a, a sort of a semi-professional IBM machine uh, for doing major works. We'd um, my, had a uh, BBCB with the Z80 coprocessor, but that was for developing software with um, 6502 and Z80 cross-assemblers on it. Um, so that was in use and we needed an office machine. Um, the uh, word processing for the uh, manuals had been done by a company in Cardiff, um, a friend of Graham's who, who offered this service um, and some computer consultancy. And um, when we looked to bring the manual production in-house from the first type in, then we really wanted a system that had WordStar that the original manual had been typed on. And um, we were recommended to buy the Sanyu MBC 555, which uh, you see here. Uh, this one's actually a Sanyu MBC 5052, which has 360k discs, double-sided. The one we had had um, just 160k single-sided discs. So, then uh, there's a little bit online about these uh, Sanyo devices. Um, they uh, were pretty much the first IBM PC XT compatible. Uh, that retailed us for under a thousand dollars. I mean, I think we paid about. Um, thousand four hundred pounds something like that back in the probably would have been about 83 or 84 when we bought it um i think it was it came out in 82 so uh it was quite well established by the time we already bought it um it is just slightly slower than the uh the ibm pc um and for those of the uh, uh fans of what i do it's uh um it is an 8-bit microprocessor in real terms because it's only on an 8-bit bus I think it was like 0.8 rating on Norton, according to this website. So it is it is quite a slow machine. Um, so uh, for those who've seen the uh, uh, Gilsoft news uh, uh, newsletter, um, there's some photographs at the back of uh, the various uh, 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 people who worked in the environment. Graham, myself, my dad, uh, Pam, uh, Hugh there and Andy, uh, Art, my mum, Pam. And uh, Neil and Barry, the, my cousin and my uncle, who helped out with the accounts. Um, what you can't see, though, is the uh, the other side of those photographs uh, is actually um, a uh, the 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 Sanyo itself is in those shots. So I've got the original um, photographs here. So uh, there's the one with Barry, um, and you can see the Sanyo uh, sat on his little bench. Um, we probably also got, uh, uh, my dad was more of a user of the uh, the typewriter, but that's just the uh, the other side of the office with the desk and the, the adder. I think we've still got that adding machine somewhere. Um, and of course, there's my mum for some reason, she's got her eyes closed, but uh, there's another shot of the Sanyo on the desk as well. Uh, it seems to have run a directory of something. There's the original Sanyo manuals. So um, you can see we have the original uh, Sanyo monitor. Uh, I've actually got it now set up on a Philips TV, which uh, will allow us to, to still see the output because it's got a composite video output. Um, I'm afraid that monitor's long gone. So, um, so that was the, the machine back in the day. Uh, so, it's, uh, we'll give you a little bit of a coverage of uh, what I did to get it running after the procurement, and um, we'll uh, come back to actually seeing it turn on and, and go then. So when I first had the machine, it was pretty heavy, pretty well wrapped. Um, uh, lucky to get the keyboard with it as well, which was a little bit seized. So I just give it a brief clean. Oh, it's still quite grubby. It needs to be stripped down and, and done properly. All I wanted to do was just check whether the machine was operational. Um, so I obviously it's, it's surprisingly heavy. Actually, it's incredibly heavy to lift. It's a really solid chassis, um, and it was absolutely caked in dust and dirt. You can see some of the dirt in these photographs. Um, so uh, I opened it up, disconnected the, the power connectors, obviously, and I just powered up the power supply separately. I didn't really uh, test the capacitors and, and things in it. I just 
powered it up with it um, isolated from the computer just to check the voltage is fairly stable even after a, a little bit of running obviously before I powered up as well I cleaned all the dirt and dust off the, uh, the system so um, after the boards had been roughly cleaned I didn't do a great deal but it was just a wipe of the chip tops and a blow of the dust off of it um, I took some photographs of the board once I cleared the disk drive assembly off the top because it's on a plinth um, just so I could see the part numbers of the chips uh, for reference in future and to just take a look at the inside of the machine. Um, I was still a little bit of dirt and grime in places but I, it, was, it was good enough I thought that uh, we could probably chance uh, powering it up. And there was two discs stuck in the, well one disc stuck in the right hand drive which was a heck of a, a job to get undone because uh, it looked like it had been dropped on the front yeah. Um, and so the uh, drive eject knob had bent some of the mechanism at the back um, but uh, actually after that uh, power up it, it did actually boot even off of the disc that was in the drive which is incredible so uh, and it, it was uh, basic uh, so um, surprisingly I, uh, I went on and then cleaned the rest of it properly um, which is some of the later photographs but it did actually boot which is quite surprising really um, this is the uh, drive, uh, the, the inside of the board after I'd done a proper clean on it just to make sure it was uh, uh, you know, the fans were, were gummed up and you could do a hell of a racket from the fans so that needed quite a bit of cleaning to, to make it more reliable. I also uh, took the opportunity to strip the drives down because one of them wasn't working at all and uh, the other one was making a hell of a racket so the uh, disc engage wasn't coming up and down uh, there was uh, a bent end on the, the disc lever which uh, I had to square off uh, and repair but I did swap the drives over because the one was uh, a little bit more noisy than the other so the uh, just changed the jumper over so it's a simple jumper here and changed them over in order to just to make the, the primary drive the better quality one that had uh, seemed to be much uh, less noisy so um, essentially that was all I did, it was just a quick get it running and sure enough here it is uh, running with a, made a copy of the boot disk straight away obviously as soon as I cleaned the drives. I really didn't expect the other one to boot which is why I didn't even, uh, uh, <laughs> but anyway, had it did and I've now got a second disk that will boot. So we'll power the machine on and you can see that drive going hopefully. So if we get the uh, boot disk, um, we'll come on. This is my copy I made of it. So we can put it in just near. We'll turn the TV on. So we've got monitor display. And hopefully the monitor will come on. Okay. I have to go through the tuning ones. And we've got the external display which is uh, uh, it's not nothing on it at the moment so we press the power on and there we are it's now got external feed uh, it should boot up it spins the drive continuously waiting for a disc because there's no actual BIOS in this machine it's loaded from the disc so sure enough there it is and MS-DOS 2.11 with IOSYS version 1.0 this is a single and double sided machine um, so uh, I won't put the date in at the moment, but um, you, know, you can see that the, the enter key is a little bit stiff, so it does need to strip down and to go. Uh, but we can do a DIR, and the disk will show what it has in it, which is just command, com, and format at the moment. Um, so we're pretty much ready to go. So we'll uh, move the camera in a bit closer and uh, explore some of the disks that we've got in these boxes and see what's there. Um, I happen to know there's the older DOS disk so we look forward to trying that. Okay so uh, we're going to take a look at some of these uh, boxes of disks now. Um, the first one I got is uh, marked uh, Master Discs, uh, these lovely Dyson boxes. So we obviously used a lot of those back in the day um, and in them we've got um, some interesting discs. Uh, so this one which is uh, marked as disc number one I think so uh, it's a nice little batching label for it uh, Gilsoft disc number one 1984 so chances are we had this machine in 84 then didn't we 
Uh, interesting, you know, its uh, system disk is MS-DOS 1.25, not 2.11, which is obviously the one that supported the 160K disk. So uh, let's give it a go, see if it boots. We've got a couple of other ones in there with the uh, Sage accounts, which we uh, disk number two. Um, obviously, there's quite a bit of software came with it, like Calcstar. Uh, what else did we get? We had uh, Mail Merge and Spellstar, Reportstar. Um, we used to use the Mail Merge and Spellstar for customer list management. Uh, Datastar as well for managing the databases. Um, I don't know if we ever used Reportstar much, but obviously we used a lot of Wordstar. Um, and obviously we've got the install disk. And we've also got an auto boot of basic, so that'll be worth a try as well. Um, obviously the other discs are going to be less useful to us to now, but uh, we hopefully have got other discs that cover all of those. So uh, we'll take a look at that one afterwards. Um, and we'll give it a go with the uh, system disc. Yep. I've got the lights out in here so that we can see the screen hopefully. So uh, let's power it on, just gets the drive spinning and stick the disc in the drive and off we go there we go straight in and we have um ms dos basic yeah so iosys 2.10 that's interesting we have to look back on what the other one was and an ms dos version 1.25 i'm sure the iosys on the previous one was 1.00 uh, that's interesting. Okay, something to look at. Uh, we can do a DIR on here as well, and hopefully we should have a few more items on there. Um, does basic start? Uh, yep, there we go. Basic DOS. So this is the, one of the first discs we must have made from our master discs, and it worked. And uh, what was it called? Demo. Okay, that is obviously the command to, to load from disk. Is it going to work? And does the demo run? So let's have a look. Program name demo.bass, dated from 27th and 9th, 1983. Okay, so I assume the break button will allow us to break, yes, from the listing. And we can type run. Do you use a colour display monitor? Well, yes, we do. It's composite though. Okay, well there we go. Here's the, uh, the Sanyo demo. I probably haven't seen this run since 1984. Lovely line drawing capability. Obviously this is the high res mode. It's not quite compatible with graphics modes with the IBM ones. It's loosely based on CGA I believe. But a lot of software won't run on it. There we go. The Sanyo MBC 550 series. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Okay, so character sets. I think there's some graphics drawing and, and foreign character sets. Yeah, I remember us doing a lot of uh, finding it useful when we did foreign versions of the, of the manuals. So, end. And that's it. It just looks like it loops in grey and round and round. Excellent. Do you have to press and hold the space bar? Or do they mean the brake key? Yeah, whatever you have, brake works anyway. Okay, and we can hit reset as well, which is on the side of the keyboard. There's a little button recessed in the keyboard, which reboots back into the system. Okay, so that master disk has obviously been kept quite carefully in time. Uh, I don't know whether we've got any uh, other basic programs. I'll put the master disk back in the master box so we can keep them tidy. And this is disk number 10 with auto boot with basic, so I wonder if there's anything on it. I assume it will auto boot, but uh, just see if there's any other programs on there. Nope, it is just basic and an auto exec dot bat. So obviously I, uh, I learned how to use auto exec dot bat because, of course, I was the IT support engineer for Gilsoft as well as everything else. Uh, uh, just says basic. There we go. That's a really very basic DOS, isn't it? So 
So there's not a lot of files on the DOS disk, so I'm literally just copying and formatting, and that's uh, a very early DOS. Okay, um, what version of BASIC was that? I didn't notice when we started it. So um, let's just have a look off of this disk, because I noticed the one that came with the machine was the MS-DOS 2.11 with IOSYS 1.00, and this is uh, disk 1.31, and the basic that's on the um, later 211 disk is 1.34. So I'm assuming the IOSYS 1.00 was a lower number because it was the one to go with MS-DOS 2.11. Okay, so we've got the that one. We better keep a boot disk handy just in case we need it out of the master disks. And we'll put that down. Um, just as well for those uh, using BASIC on a Sanyo, if I uh, put the keyboard uh, up a little bit you can see that there are some function keys on the right hand side and they do uh, various things, so uh, PF1 is a clear screen, uh, PF2 is an auto line numbering facility, and uh, what have we got, PF3 is a list, which is no program in there, PF4 is to run a program, and PF5 does a directory of the disk. We put the system disk back in. Um, so we're assuming if we do Shift and Six, it's a key list. That's handy, which tells you what all the keys do. That would have been better on one probably, but it looks like you can program them to do what you want. So there's an interesting little feature from the machine. Okay, I'm going to reset now and go out of basic. box of discs here that's uh, manual discs number one um, so they are uh, pretty uh, pretty tightly packed in here I've, uh, I've had a quick little nose so we've got um, the, uh, this is obviously still using our disc labeling scheme so disc number 26 which is the uh, manual text for white noise and graphics Okay, so that'll be worth a little look at, probably. And we've got quite a lot of different uh, files and bits and pieces in here um, that relate to the different systems we had, um, including uh, this one, which is the the Illustrator WordStar Manual Files 48K Spectrum Working 1. Okay, well, this one, uh, despite saying uh, Customer List 1, um, is uh, not what it seems. It's actually got all the backup disks in it. Um, so uh, we've got quite a few disks in here. Um, the accounts, that'll be interesting if we've got any accounts data. I noticed some disks called Ledger in some of the other boxes I got. Um, another copy, these are the Benemark Master backup and working. So this is a backup of a system disk. And we've got a backup of the Sage accounts and its utilities. And we bought Sage early on to manage the finances. Um, we've got uh, Datastar here, Mail Merge and Spellstar, Calcstar. And WordStar 3.3, so I'm assuming we should be able to just put that into the, I'll put that into this drive, drive A, do a DIR. Yeah, that disk sounds a little bit clunkier than the others. So not a smooth running. So don't know that much open that one working. don't think any of these have got data on that I would have secured first with a whole disk imager program on the main PC. Uh, they're mostly the supplied disks that came with the system, or ones I've already recovered most of the data from later backups. So for those who are concerned about lack of uh, implementing proper procedures to secure the contents of old disks. No, I think we've probably got a failed disk on that one. See why that disk doesn't work. You should be able to see in the light there's a definite scratch all the way around the disk. So there's no wonder we're having problems with the reliability of that one. So we'll have to, uh, it's probably from even back in the day it was failing. So okay. I, what I've decided to do is to format a new single sided disk with the operating system on and put words down on it. So here we go. And so it logs in. Okay. Hopefully you can uh, see that on camera, right? 
That's a little bit bright, isn't it? There we go. So, um, what I've got now on this disc, I copied off the Masters a copy of WordStar. And we also managed to just fit on there um, the wng.man file, which I found on the backup disc. If we start WordStar, it occurred to me maybe there was a compatibility difference with the 360k BIOS and this copy of WordStar, which came with the 160k original discs. But uh, there we go. So it's now in, able to see that. So if I open a document file, so if we open uh, WNG, man. And this is the uh, manual for white noise and graphics program from Gilsoft. Uh, I think you can turn the, the top area of the screen off if you want, you just go full screen. But, uh, oh, that's all the different commands available. There we go then. So I got a couple of hours worth of playing and restoring files, I think, and finding anything um, interesting. We also, uh, obviously after the Sanyo, we um, then moved on to an Epson PC as well, just for the DOS history fans. Um, and this is the source of the 360k floppies that I've got mixed in amongst these. Uh, obviously it had a hard drive as well. Uh, and this was really the machine we started doing the development on uh, using the 2500 AD cross assemblers um, and switched from the BBC. So the Sanyo still remained in, in use for our um, word processing and, and office management and, and accounts and things. But the Epson became our development PC. We also had a, um, a actual uh, full IBM as well. And this is a, a lot later in the 80s now. Um, and you can see the uh, D-Base manual there as well. So um, and this was done, a lot of the development for... Uh, uh, DARD was probably done on this particular IBM PC um, and the reason I've dug out this photograph um, is also you can see the two printers and that was my main interest is by the only photograph I got of the printers this one was the daisy wheel that came with the Sanyo when we bought it originally and continued to produce really quite high quality uh, letter outputs um, this is from the um, uh, documentation uh, book uh, envelope of bits and pieces which I'll probably go through as a separate video but uh, we are so we got a, a doc typical sort of production document off of the daisy wheel that's been photographed this one's a, a letter about uh, how to use the SID um, in uh, um, so it comes with a, a nicely hand-drawn uh, look at the way the SID registers work so you can use a SID from inside a quill uh, no date on it um, uh, there's another one as well, for example, this one's uh, this one's actually an original box, so it's actually signed. So and this one is about uh, the Quill and the TS-2068, um, but it doesn't have any... But we do say we tried sticking a, a 16K ROM in the uh, Spectrum in the 2068, which allowed the Quill to run. Uh, so that's an interesting little snippet, I expect, for those who are interested in the history. But as you can see, the production quality was really quite high, and we then had a large photocopier, which we could reproduce uh, a lot of uh, documents on. Hopefully you found this bit of a retrospective of the DOS machines of Gilsoft interesting. I took out a lot of uh, fiddling about with discs that had corrupt sectors and damages. It's uh, quite a lot. They're, they're old now, aren't they? But it was an interesting machine and I'm glad we've got the one back now to keep uh, pouring over the discs. One interesting thing was uh, a couple of weeks ago Noel's Retro Lab did a bench test against a number of machines using some simple basic. This was an Atari XL. It took 50 seconds, so we thought we'd give the uh, Sanyo a go. And it didn't do too bad. A typical of an 8-bit machine of the era. It managed it in 51 seconds. Pretty much the same as an Oric Atmos. Um, although the Sinclair QL could do it in 39, pretty much saying that the uh, it was a, a, a quantum leap at the time. So... Thanks for watching. Speak to you all soon.